Greetings to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to the midweek tune-up in the Word here at Wesley United Methodist Church, Austin, Texas, where I, Sylvester Everton Chase Jr., am the lead pastor. My dear brothers and sisters, we have made it through the season of Lent, and hopefully we can say that we have come out of Lent improved and better as children of God. On this Wednesday, April the 20th, we want to look at this particular book of the Bible and these scriptures, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 10 and 11, repeating, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. Reading from the King James Version translation, follow me as we read 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. For Demas had forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dermatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen, amen, and amen. We use this particular subject, this particular theme, coming out of the season of Lent, hoping that we are better. Our subject, Seeing others the right way. Seeing others the right way. Seeing others the right way. How we view others and our relationship with others has a lot to do with our happiness and how we get along with people and how we're able to mingle with people and feel at ease and comfortable with one another. Here in this book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, the scriptures that I have just read to you, we're looking at John Mark decided to take time off to visit his family when he was on a missionary journey with Paul and Barnabas. On a missionary journey, out doing the work of the Lord. And here, John Mark decides, well, I'm not going to be able to go with you all any further on this missionary journey. I need to return home to spend some time with family. Later, when they were about to go on another missionary journey, Paul and Barnabas, Barnabas wanted to take John Mark again with them on this next missionary trip. But Paul says, no way. Take John Mark. You know what he did last time? He went us 
with us part of the way and then decided to turn home. I do not want John Mark to go with us on this particular missionary journey for what he did last time in leaving us, he might do again. There was great contention between Paul and Barnabas because of this, and they parted from one another. What they did was, Barnabas says, I will go ahead and take John Mark with me, and he sailed to Cyprus. And Paul, he chose Silas to take with him. And you will find this over in the book of Acts chapter 15, verses 38 through 40. But the story, the story does not end there. The story does not end. This is what happened. An old and wise Paul later on learned to add grace to his wit. And he writes over in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 10 and 11, For Demas had forsaken me, having loved this present world. So take John Mark and bring him with thee for he is profitable to me and the ministry. Isn't that something? You didn't want him earlier, but later on, we see that Paul says, others had left him, forsaken him. Now, I remember how John Mark was, and he's not so bad after all. Well, what do we learn from this story? in seeing others the right way in which you are going to put to use in your own life after this season of Lent has ended like it has. First of all, the first point, in seeing others the right way, our first point is this, and I'm going to say always to this, always, always be willing to give someone a second chance. Why? Wow. Always be willing to give someone a second chance. Paul did not want John Mark, but later on, he was willing to give him a second chance chance to be brought to him to help him in his ministry. What are you saying? God has given us a second chance. God has done that for us day in and day out. He gives us a what? Second chance. I think we sometimes sing that song, he's a God of a second chance. That means third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Over and over, he gives us a second chance. And just as the Lord has given us a second chance, we must be willing always to give someone a second chance also. You said, well, they made a mistake. I can't use them again. Well, you made a mistake yesterday, but God is still using you today, giving you a what? Second chance. In extending grace, listen up, in extending grace and giving people a second chance, it can get you hurt and disappointed. Well, you said, well, now they, now they done done it a second time. And they done hurt me again. Well, doesn't the Lord say that? I gave you a second chance. You have let me down again, but I'm going to still extend grace. The Lord is extending grace. We are to what? 
extend grace and give someone a second chance. If you are going to be Christ-like, and you say, well, I might be hurt again and disappointed, you got to realize that it is a risk that you must take. A risk that you must take. Aren't you glad the Lord has given you a what? Second chance. It's a risk that he's taken. You might hurt him. He might cry. He might feel disappointed. But he's always willing to give you a second chance. So, in seeing others the right way, we're going to always give one another, each other, a second chance. And remember, I said the word what? Always. Been second. In seeing others the right way. Don't measure. Don't measure everybody else by your standards and goals. Wow. See, I, I'm learning that too. I can't measure everybody else by my standards and goals. The truth is, other people may not be called to do what I do or called to do it the way that I do. Isn't that right? Or they may have been called to do something in a different way. Listen up. Don't make your personal preferences a precondition for loving others. Don't make your personal preferences a condition for accepting others and loving others or working with someone else. Don't measure everything else by your standards and goals. Seeing others the right way. How are we doing then? Whatever I said, always be willing to give someone else a second chance and seeing others the right way. Second, I have said, don't measure everybody else from now on by your standards and goals. They may not be called to do what you are called to do, or they may have been called to do it in a what? Different way. And last, the third point, in seeing others the right way. When you look for the best in others, you can usually find it. When you look, sometimes you might have to look hard, for the best in others, you can usually find it. Now look, we see that Paul, after that separation from John, Mark didn't want him around. When he started looking back over who could help him in his ministry at this point in time when others had left him, he thought to himself, you know what? There was some good in John Mark. That's what he's saying. He says, take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me and for the ministry. I just believe and I know there is some good in all of us. We can find faults with each other, but there's a lot of good in us if we just open our eyes and look. For scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. So every time you meet the treasure, you are bumping to the 
earthen vessel. Don't allow that to devalue the treasure or your responsibility to look for it. Yes, you can find fault, but hey, everybody, all of us have a lot of good in us. Listen up to this statement. Motivated people will rise to meet your expectation. Motivated people will rise to meet your expectations. That's why Paul says, bring Mark. Mark, I know he might have failed me, but I know right now, He's at a different point. I'm at a different point. I know he can meet the expectations that I have for him to help me and to enlarge this ministry. Well, the season of Lent has ended. But we have learned something to see others the right way. And we are going to be better off because we can see each other the right way. What did I say? Always be willing to give someone a what? Second chance. Did we get that down? I remember I'm saying on that always be willing. You said I gave them last week Forgive him the week before, but the Lord has forgiven you over and over again. Second, I have said in seeing others the right way, don't measure, don't measure everybody else by your standards and goals. I know you think you're right. I may, you know you might think you know everything, but you can't measure everybody by your standards and goals. You can share with them, but you can't look down upon them because the Lord made them and he made you and what he has in store for them is different from what he had planned for you. And third, I have said, when you look for the best in others, you usually can find it. Hey, hopefully you've been blessed through this word. Hopefully you've been hit and you will be able to get along and feel comfortable with people around you for the rest of this year because you are going to see others in the right way, the right manner. Keep the faith We'll share with you again next Wednesday. To God be the glory.